have it right here, literally. A few moments ago, as expected, Notre Dame is number one in the nation this week. Auburn moves up to number two. Florida State is now number three. The Miami Hurricanes, the former number one, drop all the way to number 10 I following that. that loss to BYU. And the Florida Gators break into the top 25 at number 23 after their big victory. But the Seminoles up to number three already in the season is young. A national powerhouse in football. That's what the Southeastern Conference sees in Florida State. It's part of the reason SEC Commissioner Harvey Schiller will make a visit to Tallahassee tomorrow. And unlike the visit from the Atlantic Coast Conference last week, the SEC will not be here on a fact-finding mission. This is strictly a sales call. With Florida State considering a move to the ACC, Schiller will want to know what it's going to take to convince FSU to go SEC. Southeastern Conference has already voiced its interest in Florida State. The ACC, meanwhile, hasn't even voted on expansion, but faculty representatives are scheduled to meet tomorrow. Maybe they'll know by then. It all leads us to the first edition of Ask Bobby, your chance to bend the ear of Florida State's head football coach. This week's the Florida State's current status as an independent. The question comes from Lanny in Tallahassee, so we asked Bobby. Lanny, the, uh, the reason you would even get into a conference is for stability. In other words, if you're in a conference, uh, you've always got eight or nine, ten teams you can play every year. You can count on it. You don't have to go around searching for a schedule. Also, conferences combine their money together and kind of divide it. So if you ever have a bad year, you've got some money to tide you over. It's just a little security. Uh, I think at Florida State, if we felt like that we could go like we are the rest of our career, we would do that. But you'd never know uh, whether or not uh, you can, and, you, and you're always looking for some, some security. Now, the coach will answer another question tonight at 11. If you want to jump on the bandwagon, phone us with your questions on Sundays, all day Sunday. You see the number, 893-6313. Can you pick out your favorite warrior from over this past weekend? Well, it's something we'll be doing every Monday. Choosing... The win over East Carolina was exactly what Florida State needed. Most importantly, they got the victory. The defense knows it has work to do. It was an injury-free game. Brad Johnson almost perfect at quarterback. Edgar Bennett scored three TDs. And our weekend warrior, Terrell Buckley, fired up the crowd with his own brand of excitement. They say Dion was probably the greatest athlete to wear an FSU uniform. And being compared to a person of that stature, that, that only makes you work harder and and be proud of yourself to a certain point. Prime time at Florida Very State isn't gone. It's only it's changed channels. Terrell Buckley is the newest in the line of prime time excitement. The sophomore defensive back has his own unique philosophy. An offensive player playing defense, but I want to score. If we're going one-on-one, -on -one, I want to pick. I not only want to pick, have an interception, but I want to score with. He did score against East Carolina, 62 yards with his punt return. It gave the Knowles a 24-10 advantage, and more importantly, added a little life to the crowd. If I go to a football game, say go see fam, you gonna play. I want they players to get the crowd into it and make them, you know, want to come back to another game. You know, no matter what the price is, I want them to be able to come and pay and want to come and see. And where does it all begin? For Buckley, it's practice. The player you see on the field on game day is the very same, even when they don't keep score. It comes natural from practicing. I work on all the moves in practice, and they just carry over. They just end it. I, I want to make them pay to come and see me practice. You know, pay $10 just to come out there and watch me practice, clown around. Terrell, equally dangerous on the base paths. He is a two-sport athlete. He's also a baseball player, and that's exactly what I mean. Scott? I don't know, Randy. Maybe not for long. Ray Bruce, who put it to him. Everybody looking around for a whistle. Hey, there is no whistle. The alert, Bobby Butler, the former Seminole, picks it up, takes it into the end zone. Referee looks around, says, hey, guys, touchdown. Yeah, and the Oilers went on to win it, or Falcons went on to win it big, 47-27. Sorry we didn't have Dion's intercept. Mark Griffin Atlantis as the Falcons scored six turnovers and scored three touchdowns, including an 82-yard interception return by Deion Sanders. Big plays came in all types. The Giants' Dave Megan took a second-half punt in for a touchdown from 68 yards out. Also marked 
by the return of some big names in Green Bay. The magic returned, but it was backup quarterback Anthony Dillwig who possessed the gilded right arm as the Packers upset the injury riddled Rams. Not to be outdone, the Bears proclaimed their return to the top of the NFC Central behind the rushing of Neil Anderson and a bear-like performance by a revived Chicago defense. Tampa's victory over Detroit featured the arrival of Vinny Testaverde as a clutch quarterback and the return to the NFL of running back Gary Anderson. Today's best rushing performance may have heralded the arrival of Sammy Smith. A big day, 159 yards and a touchdown. And while a single victory doesn't mark the arrival of a team or a player, Dallas and quarterback Troy Aikman did match their win total of 1989 with a 17-14 victory over San Diego. Aikman knows the expectations that come with being the number one draft choice, a burden that has been cast upon Jeff George for 1990. The Colts quarterback threw for one touchdown, but a Cornelius Bennett sack reminded him that week one of the NFL season belonged to the defense. with Alabama and University is brief but the signing I guess you could say today Florida State President Bernie Slager received unanimous approval from the Florida Board of Regents to accept the invitation to join the ACC all that is needed now is the expected approval of the Florida State Athletic Board Florida State will make it official at a 1030 news conference tomorrow morning this is this is a great day you know and tomorrow's gonna be a greater day for Florida State University. I'm excited about the uh, news conference that's going to take place at 1030. And at that time, uh, we'll, have, uh, 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 we'll have some great news. And that announcement is expected to make Florida State the ninth member of the prestigious Atlantic Coast Conference. This morning, the Florida Board of Regents gave unanimous approval for the move to the ACC, ending a long and arduous process that will shape the fortunes of Florida State athletics for decades to come. Reaction among coaches and fans was overwhelmingly positive. We're very excited about the possible announcement on Saturday of us being in the ACC, and I think it just has uh, tremendous possibilities for Florida State University and certainly our baseball program. I think it's just great that we're joining the ACC now that we're finally in a conference. We'll get a lot more respect. That I feel that it's going to enhance each and every one of our programs. Yesterday was a very tense day for FSU officials. When the SEC realized Florida State was leaning towards the ACC, they voted to deny the Seminoles' consideration for membership and expressed their anger, saying they would not seek any teams unless they were zealously considering joining the SEC. Meanwhile, the ACC's expected vote for expansion did not materialize right away. The likes, this party's over. Mm -hmm. Florida State President Bernie Sliger met his deadline after all, coming in one day early on that self-imposed target date of September 15th. All it took was a short presentation before the Florida Board of Regents who were meeting in Jacksonville. Once the board gave its unanimous approval of a move to the ACC, Sliger made it official, saying that FSU would accept the offer. Afterwards, he gave some insight into Florida State's thinking. Uh, it will add a dimension uh, to Florida uh, athletics, state of Florida athletics and academics by adding uh, schools, uh, association with schools, uh, active association with schools up to Washington. Well, Florida State almost found, it, found itself in no man's land on this conference call. Last night, the Southeastern Conference withdrew its offer to FSU, but just in time, the ACC hammered out an 11th hour decision to approve expansion and Florida State was in business. They have been an 18 league forever and this is a different this is a different uh, uh, step for them. But once they decided to make that step, then they unanimously said, well, there's only, you know, the, the institution we want to have join us is Florida State. ACC Brass will come to Tallahassee tomorrow morning for the official official acceptance and a press conference. Unless we forget, Florida State has a football game going on this week, and the Tribe, such a large favorite over Georgia Southern that Las Vegas won't even put up a line. But out at Seminole Camp, FSU is giving this game the kind of attention you may not have expected. We have uh, a saying, we almost had it all. And we just take it one game at a time. We, we might have looked past USM last year, and they cost us a national championship. And we're not going to let it happen this year no matter who we're playing. We were playing a high school team. We're going to treat it like, like I said earlier, like we were playing the 49 Super Bowl week. You know, we're going in to destroy.
All right, Terrell. Georgia Southern's offensive line coach is coming back to familiar territory. Remember the United States that play athletics at the Division 1A level, I don't know who it would be. Where it is, that's the big move for the ACC. They're not going to try to become a super conference. Lee, a good move for Florida State? Absolutely. Three reasons why Florida State chose the ACC. Number one, President Bertie Slyker liked the academic reputation and integrity of the ACC. Number two, Florida State wanted to jumpstart their basketball program in a heartbeat, and they did that. And number three, the ACC offers the highest revenue-sharing plan of any league in the country. And not necessarily in that order. And one other factor, they have a chance to win the national championship. It'd be tough in the SEC. The schedule's just too tough, and Bobby Bowden wanted no part of that. Remember, no team since Georgia 10 years ago has been able to win it all playing that SEC schedule. The country surrounds to become a member of the Atlantic Coast Conference. The Seminoles were deciding between the SEC and the ACC on which conference to join. And that decision may have been made for them. On Thursday afternoon, the SEC released a statement saying that Florida State would no longer be considered for membership into the conference. That very same evening, in a vote of 7-1, to one, ACC officials extended an invitation to Florida State, which was accepted. Florida State will begin conference competition in basketball in 1992, football beginning in either 1993 or 94. Now, meanwhile, the SEC continues its search for a 12th member. Speculation surrounding just who that will be centers around Miami and South Carolina. Combs got this evening. Top ranked Notre Dame is home to number four Michigan. He plays all the Harvin. Low center snap. They're coming after it. Can't get to it. The kick is away from Buckley. He'll watch it bounce once or twice. Follows the football. Picks it up on the bounce. There goes Buckley down the sideline. The wall is He's there. Gone. He is on a goal all the way. Terrell Buckley, one man to beat. And he dodges the potter. And Terrell Buckley has done it twice in a row. The Bobby Bowden Show is brought to you by Barnett Bank, your source for the Seminole Visa card, by new Jumpin' Jack Cheese Flavor Doritos, Doritos knows Jack about cheese, by your local Ford dealer, Ford trucks are too tough to beat, by Osmos Products from Great Southern Wood, if it doesn't say Osmos on this yellow label, believe me, you don't want it. By 10K, the taste even Gatorade drinkers prefer. By Centel, the telecommunications company where people connect. By Blockbuster Video, wow, what a difference. And by Coca-Cola and your local Coca-Cola bottler. Coca-Cola Classic, you can't beat the feeling. Here are Coach Bobby Bowden and Gene Deckerhoff. Hello and welcome to our show. The Seminoles extend the nation's longest winning streak by winning their 12th in a row at the expense of Georgia Southern on Saturday night in front of a sold-out crowd at Doe Campbell Stadium. Congratulations, Coach, and I know you're happy with the way your team played, the fact that so many players played, and what a tremendous turnout to see Florida State play Georgia Southern. Oh, we were able to play a lot of players, and it had a beautiful night, and I thought we were going to get some rain. And uh, I thought the band, the Seminole Martian Chiefs, set everything up with their music and their display before the ball game, and... Had a lot of excitement, and it was a Seminole Saturday night. Standing room only crowd sees the Seminoles beat Georgia Southern 48 to 6. All sorts of highlights, everything imaginable you can see at a football game coming up, plus a great moment of champion. Sixth largest crowd, coach, to see a football game at Doe Campbell Stadium. Yeah, and that's a great ceremony right there. Uh, Chief Osceola and Renegade just did a great job. And look at look the crowd there now. This is Georgia Southern Division 1AA, and we got a packed house. Standing room only parents weekend, and I understand you could have sold about 6,000 more tickets. Oh, yeah. First play of the game amply here on a sweep, and gets us off to sets the tone of the game, picks up about nine yards, I believe. Then uh, Brad comes back, back and hits uh, Edgar Bennett, uh, who's really catching the ball well. Boy, I'm being very pleased the way he's catching the ball. Mike Morris there at guard from Miami, Florida. Look at that tackle out there. Who is that blocking out there? Uh, yeah, I couldn't see who that was. That my, I know who it was. That's Hayward Haynes. Hayward Haynes, six ball. Right. Bar is he from Bartow, Florida? Hayward Haynes from Bartow, Florida. Sure Paul Quinn. Right. Yeah, exactly. Paul Quinn. All right, now here's a freshman, Sean Jackson here, who played a lot. He's from New Orleans, and he played a lot because Amp hurt his hand. And uh, there again, Mike Marsh leading the bike. Look at, look at old Matt Brown out there, Hussman, uh, from Live Oak, Florida. Boy, I was really pleased with the way that boys played. Here's Brad Johnson, Black Mountain, North Carolina, hitting Edgar Bennett. From Jackson, look at this, Mike Marsh, number 60, leading the blocking downfield again. There's Matt Fryer, number 12, showing up. Edgar tried to get it in, and I hand off to Ampley. He breaks it around left end, and I 
Let's see, is that uh, Flint? Who in the world's been out there blocking it? that tight end position? Number 86 from uh, Jacksonville, Lonnie Florida. Uh, Marvin Farrell. Marvin Farrell yeah. from Jacksonville, Florida. He and uh, Warren Hart, both of them right. from Jacksonville, Florida, were uh, our, our freshman tight ends for us, and we're beginning to play them more. Lonnie Johnson, another true freshman, blocked the punt this week, by the way, from Miami, Florida. There's uh, our chief Osceola. Boy, he does a real good job. Well, they run the options very tough. Oh, look like a real good play by Kirk Carruthers. Number 62 there, right there, Troy Sanders from Elba, Alabama. Boy, he played well. He is really improving. I've been very pleased with him. Look at that, 45, Kirk Carruthers, Troy Sanders. Carruthers from East Lansing Mission, number 45. One of the leaders on our football team, although he's only an underclassman. Tony Moss, number 99 from Miami, Florida. 75 there is Joe Ostrzewski. Uh, He's the younger of the two. Officers He's the boys. younger, yeah, what, about the 12 twins. seconds? <laughs> 12 seconds. Uh, and uh, and uh, Richie Andrews comes in and kicks the field ball. Richie Andrews is kicking so much better, I can't believe it. It's, uh, you wonder why. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just him. You just do it a heck of a job. Well, look at that hit there. I couldn't. That might. You know who that might have been? Number 55? That wasn't uh, Jones. Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones. Fred Jones is younger. I know Fred's. I know Fred and his daddy. And family are so proud of Marvin, you know. Marvin because they're, they're such a good family. Oh, another freshman to start at linebacker. He follows Kirk. Oh yeah, exactly. Now, they threw a lateral out there, and Bill Reagan from Live Oak, Florida. I tell you, we get more. We're getting more response out of Live Oak, Florida now because we got, or we got Smith, we got Reagan, and we got old Matt Pryor from Live Oak, and and those people are coming over here in droves to watch the Seminoles play. Brad comes back. He hits Shannon Baker. That's his first touchdown. Shannon Baker from Lakeland, Florida, uh, caught his first touchdown pass since he's been at Florida State in a game, number one, and he caught another one later in the game, which gave him two, and I'm afraid he's gonna have a taste of it, Jim. <laughs> and usually, once, more. once you get a taste of it, you don't like to stop. And so, uh, I, I was very pleased with that. Brad Johnson dropped back and hit him uh, for the big one. Reggie Johnson, number 80, from Pensacola, Florida, has played real well. And there, uh, 62, Troy Sanders, he got around that ball a lot. I saw him running the ball. Grady Ross from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. What a hustler. He, I, you know, our, all of our weak side linebackers are from Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. Look at 44, Johnny Weich, who's playing real well for us. Johnny's where, Tifton? Tifton, Georgia? Or Johnny is it Weich Thomasville? from Thomasville. Thomasville, Georgia. That's exactly I get it. Bryce Abbott. Bryce Abbott. Tifton. I saw Bryce in there, Tifton. too, from yeah, Tifton. Exactly. By the way, Shivers uh, was in town this week, he and his family. Mm -hmm. And here's Brad Johnson on a rollout and uh, picked up a nice block from uh, Dave Roberts there from uh, Griffin, Georgia. I saw some of his friends down from uh, Griffin, Georgia at our ball games too. Here's Brad back, good fake, no, a good handoff. Boy, that's a good fake in there. Amp Lee from Chipley, Florida. Amps, Amp can really, you know, here's some good shots of why he runs so well. You see how he makes you miss him? He's really got some good moves. He's not the burner that you like, but gosh, he's got such good, now here's Brad again on a rollout and uh, hits Dave Roberts. There's Lawrence Dawsey from Dothan, Alabama out there in the flat. Here's Brad, he hits uh, Edgar Bennett again, and it seems like every time he runs, uh, catches a pass, that little number 12 down there, now watch out now, Matt. Don't give me one of them live oak uh, penalties <laughs> down there. Bennett's caught yeah. 10 passes Now watch his games. move. You see Amp's move uh, there? I didn't see it. He's so quick, <laughs> neither, did, neither did that cornerback. I wish they'd show it again. Watch, we'll see it. watch his move right here. Now this is, you know, we can't teach this, watch, see? Uh, <laughs> that end and corner yep. just completely that, faked that. There's a strap right down there on the ground. He just faked him right <laughs> out. Great job. So 21 to three, I'm gonna say this, we were having to work like mad. Georgia Southern would not give us anything. We had to work like mad to get any kind of yard. But I tell you what, Florida State last January went to their third straight New Year's Day bowl game. But you know, the, the game was not exactly what I thought it would be against Nebraska. Well, Nebraska was hot over the fact that they'd, they had lost uh, 31 to 28 the last time we'd played them, which was what, the year before, right? Absolutely, but this game, was kind of weird in a way because the game starts out and everybody's looking for Florida State to do big things offensively, but Florida State's defense takes charge. Nebraska gets on the board early in the ball game, goes ahead seven to nothing. Florida State's defense comes in and makes some great defensive plays, a fumble recovery, a pass interception, but we miss two chip shots on field goals and Florida State is dying until we get to the second uh, quarter and lo and behold, Mr. P.T. Willis takes charge then. It becomes the P.T. Willis Bowl. Uh, the second quarter was an unbelievable. He gets out, he con connects 12 of 14 for 210 yards. That's in one quarter, by the way, one 210 quarter. yards. My God, that's a career for me. 
Uh, he ended up, Vic, as you very well know, with 422 yards, which is uh, five touchdowns, which I don't think is... I, you never should say records are not going to be broken, but that's an unbelievable record. And the records, what's really interesting is that P.T. Wills' records, which he broke, were set by a Florida State. Yeah, Danny McManus. Danny McManus uh, a couple years ago in that tough ball game that uh, he pulled out. But again, Bobby Bowden uh, just knows how to win ball games, Bert. You know, when you think about the coaching today, Vic, there's, uh, in my opinion, there's three legends left coaching with uh, Bode retiring last year. And, and the one that has the best bowl record in terms of consecutive wins is Bobby Bowden. He has learned how to win bowl games. And he certainly did in 1990. As Florida State knocks off Nebraska, 41-17. Join us again next week when we relive another great moment in Florida. And as always on the Bobby Bowden Show, a great visit with Burt Reynolds and uh, Vic Frenzy, great moments in Florida State football, great memories from that fiesta. Yeah, and I wish Burt Reynolds was back in Jupiter, Florida, instead of being way out there west. They tell that series he's got's gonna be a great one. Okay, Brad Johnson's back to throw. Good protection in there by Mancini and uh gosh. Edgar uh, Bennett does Ed, it. Edgar again. Bennett on another you, no, Ed, yards. Yeah, Edgar, okay, he didn't have a hundred yards rushing, but he got a total of a hundred and something yards uh, catching the football. And uh and that's very good. All right, so here we hit uh, Dawsey from Dothan, Alabama. Uh, across the middle there. And, Dawsey uh, had been shut out till that point in the morning. Well, they, they were doubling his side, we, so we, we threw to the other side, and uh, I don't think Dawsey liked that. He wants that ball, you know, but we were able to hit him some. Uh, Edgar Bennett again on some real fine. Edgar Bennett from uh, Jackson, Florida. His mother and dad, what a fine family he's got over there in Jackson. We, we might have been proud of him. Jason Dillaberry, who's from uh, Orange Park. I don't know if they claim Jackson or not, do they? <laughs> he played a lot last night. He played there's, Orange Park High School. Boy, there's Amp Lee on some fine run. Look at 51. Robin Baker. Robbie Baker has been doing so well at Sun. I've been very pleased with him. Rich Andrews takes another field goal. Florida State takes 24-3 lead. Now, I'm going to tell you what. We're working hard for those points. Georgia Southern yeah. will not give us anything. They are a well-coached football team. They are a team that if they just continue to progress, in my opinion, has got another chance to win it all this year. And I hope they do. They're, they're, they're deserving. All right, there's a call. Some real fine block in there again by Georgia Southern. You see them cutting our people down? But we had so many there. We got everybody. Somebody finally got to the ball. 66 there is uh, Shilbrack. We put him in. To, he's six foot eight. We put him in to try to block uh, field goals up the middle. One of these days he's going to get one. Here's Casey Weldon from Tallahassee, Florida. He came in. We put him in a crucial situation, and he did a real good job. I was very pleased with his performance. Here he hits... Uh, uh, Dawsey, Lawrence Dawsey, and there's old Reggie Johnson from Pensacola, Florida. And here's Sean uh, Jackson, our freshman running back from New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, playing uh, for Amp Lee. We also played Felix Harris from Lake Classic. But uh, Sean here was a little bit more productive. A real fine one. Nice block by Mancini. There's that prior out there working hard again. Yeah. And here's McGinn Dawsey. McGinn Dawsey blocking downfield. Dawsey got two blocks down there, so he nearly scored. But uh, Sean's a big back. He's 220 pounds, and, uh, you know, and uh, he, he's really got a good future. Uh, he, he slips about four tackles on this run. Well, play. yes, he does. He, yes, he does. Uh, Tiger, Tiger McMillan also, you know, one of our freshman running backs. We're trying to redshirt him if we can. That's the longest run of the season by a similar running back, 51 yards. Yeah, but it's early in the year. We've got to have, we're going to have to have some 90 yards. If they don't, I'm going to move Terrell Buckley over the tailback. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he likes those long ones. Boy, there's Paul Moore from Miami, Florida, trying to go over the top there. Again, Jason Dillaberry is in there at uh, guard now. He got a lot of action, and it's the first time. Uh, then our, our, our center, we have a center. Of, oh, there's that Paul Moore coming up yeah. inside. Well, Paul, Paul's got a great enthusiasm to play football. I really like his attitude. The power runner for Yeah. Him. Our cheerleaders did a real good job, uh, Gene. We had a great crowd there, packed stadium. Mm -hmm. And our cheerleaders, I thought, did a great job of getting the response. Uh, from our crowd. Casey that, Weldon. Along with the band, Seminole band. Casey Weldon has directed the Seminoles down on a touchdown that your team really needed. Casey Weldon needed. Right, exactly. Carl Simpson uh, from uh, Baxley, Georgia made that happen. Look at there. Number 95, he's only a sophomore. Number 10, Corian Freeman, also from Jacksonville, Florida. Our, our, our weak side linebackers are three Jacksonville Florida. Corian Freeman, Grady Ross, and, uh, Howard and Howard Dinkins, all of them from the same city. That's amazing. And, they get all three of them are good. They all can play good. They're all tough. And, all right, number 94 there is Todd McIntosh from Richardson, Texas. I don't know why he won't claim Dallas. He likes Richardson. Oh, look here. Oh, look at a nice tackle there by, was that? Uh, like, uh, was it McCarty? 
I could, I couldn't tell. Could have been McCorvey, though. McCorvey from Pensacola, Florida, has played well. And there's the fooler from Pascagoula right there, picking the ball up. Now, you talk where speed wins ball games? There watch, it is. Watch that move he gave on the safety, see? That's real fine run, real fine run. Then he... We'll see it again, Coach, and as you watch Terrell Buckley, only into his second game his sophomore year, he has tied the Florida State career punt returns for touchdown yeah. carrier. And yeah. guess who he tied? Uh, Deion. Deion right. Sanders and Joe Wessel with <laughs> yeah. this yeah. touchdown return. And he right did here. it as a sophomore. The yeah. Fula from Pascagoula. The Fula from Pascagoula. Picked up a good block there from John Nance. That was our Coca-Cola play of the game, by the way. Well, it ought to be. John Nance, I want to mention John from Barco, Florida, coached by Paul Quinn. And uh, uh, we've had some outstanding that. players from there. Look at, look at, see Todd McIntosh there? He's a freshman tackle. He's going to be a good one. He just needs experience. Again, from Dallas, Texas, or Richardson, Texas. And there's old Brad Lundstrom from Naples, Florida, who played well. I know he, I bet his dad was at the ball game. He was, no, uh, look at Sean break tackles. Broken two tackles. He's got good speed. He's, this young man's football is all ahead of him, too, because now here comes old Casey Weldon. Oh, boy, he did a good job here. 84 there is, is Warren Hart. See it blocked by Warren Hart? Mm -hmm. There's another block there by uh, Kevin Knox, I think. Kevin yeah. Knox. Kevin Knox from uh, where? Niceville. Fort, Niceville. He and uh, Kenny Felder. Boy, there's another nice catch by Shannon. Shannon Baker might have got a taste of it, Gene. You know, it, <laughs> it's like a lot of things. Once you get a taste of it, you just can't stop. Yeah, you, you know? said, you said and, that on his first and, one, and he yeah, did get a taste of it. He got a it. taste of it, and now he wants that ball, and that's just something you want. It's contagious. We want it to become contagious. Brad Johnson holding there for the extra points. The snapper is a Gene Howe. Gene Howe, who's done a good job down through the years snapping for us and a, and a great enthusiastic guy. And your kicking, your kicking game is continuing to be perfect. Though. Well, it better get perfect because each week I think we're playing a tougher opponent. I think each week your, your opponents are getting tougher. We, we haven't played, uh, you know, great teams yet, as you know. But, gee, I just hope we can grow with it and get better. 48 to 6, the final score. The Seminoles are 2 0. We look ahead to a trip to New Orleans, the Big Easy, and the Tulane Green Wave. Stay tuned. Out of the eye, Seth Johnson to the 43 yard line. First down. Will play fake, swings the ball out. He's got Bennett. Bennett to the 35 to the 30. Bennett down the sideline, stays in bounds to the 20. Bennett to the 10. Bennett to the 5. Touchdown, Florida State. Bobby Bowden show road because when you you know every team you have to find out how they play at home every team you have to find out how they play on the road and we won on the road and I was happy winning on the road is never easy and the victory by the Seminoles was not an easy thing but the Seminoles still win their third in a row and extend the nation's longest winning streak to 13 consecutive victories we'll have highlights of that Tulane football as a coach I've been known to take chances on the football field to take chances on the field but not when you're building outdoors if it doesn't say I'm it's always good to know when you go on the road that your fans are going to follow and Bobby uh, in Tulane in the Superdome on Saturday night it appeared Florida State had more fans than Tulane had for that ball game. we had more people than they did at least they made more noise I tell you, it was very uh, uh, conspicuous without the Seminole band there, too, the marching chiefs. We really missed them. But I thought the Florida State Chili's did a great job of getting our crowd going. We, they were very, very obvious there. There's uh, Marvin Jones, our freshman linebacker, along with a Seminole defense making a great play. I thought our defense played the best game. I, I just, I had no, they shut them out for, for uh, what, 57 minutes. 57, uh, 57 and a half minutes. minutes. I, yeah, I just didn't think you could do that. You know, they hadn't been shut out in about... Oh, a long time. There's Edgar Bennett there. Uh, Brad Johnson hits Bennett and uh, makes a, uh, a very big play. Brad Johnson had a good game. Now, here's Ampley showing you some real fine running. Is that Mike Morris down there? Mike Morris, number 60 from Miami, leading the interference on that. Robert, Bob Stevenson from Pensacola, Florida, Scambia High School, started at guard. It's the third position he's played at the last three weeks. He started last week at tackle, the week before at guard. This week at the other guard, strong guard. And to me, he's the most valuable player we got right now. That little play fooled everybody, including our camera crew, and uh, it was a fourth down play. It, it was. It was a fourth down play. Edgar Bennett ran a, had a fourth and one, and nearly broke it for a touchdown. And, uh, and then we knocked the ball in. I think Amplee takes from yeah. Shipley, Florida, takes it in um, uh, behind Reggie Jackson. Reggie Johnson, who also is from Escambia High School yeah. in Pensacola. Tulane, Tulane made you work for everything you got they, in that they, ball game. They did. They chose not to blitz, and they made us go this long, long, hard way. Richie Andrews kicked uh, the extra point. 
And he, boys, he, he's really done a great job for us uh, from down around Fort Lauderdale. And uh, look at old Joe Ostrzewski. Look at look at Leon Fowler. Mm -hmm. Boy, Leon from uh, Fort Myers, Florida. I know Walter Grace and his mama are proud of him, the way he's playing ball. Who is that? That Johnny, Johnny White. White. Those so, Colonel Safers will put the leather on. From them. Sifton. Yeah. Tony Moss, number 99. Boy, there, there's the play of the game, though. Yep. Low Terrell Buckley. Look at Marvin Jones there. Kurt Carruthers, East Lansing, Michigan. But Buckley made the play of the game. There's Brad Johnson on the sideline there. Coach, he is on the side. Look who's quarterback, Casey Welder. What, well, we, what put, we put Casey in the second quarter. Boy, didn't he do a great job. We wanted to, we, we said, we told him, the quarterbacks were going to put him in the second series, or the first series of the second quarter. So we knew it was going to be some pressure. And, and he, uh, again, before we could get these people coming up down the road, we, we had to see what he could do under fire. Under pressure fire. I knew what he could do under fire. Here's Casey there. Well, he leaves a real nice take. Threw the ball well. Threw the ball very intelligent. There's old Lawrence Dawson. Boy, Lawrence Dawson. Boy, how well he played. Six more catches. Boy, he's a heck of a leader. I'm really proud of uh, Lawrence. He's caught a pass in uh, every, uh, the last 24 straight games. Yes, he did. And look at Mike Morris leading that block in there. Dawson blocking. Amplee just nearly gets it out of there. Amplee is an instinctive football player. Uh, you you kind of hate to tell him how to run. Tomorrow, look at Bennett. Edgar Bennett leading there at fullback. Got a key block on the linebacker. And hey, look, he came at right, so came close of breaking that thing out of there. I'm mighty proud of him. Reggie Dixon from Jacksonville, Florida, playing in there at uh, split tackle. Robin Baker from Fort Myers, Florida, playing so well. Uh, really proud of the way these guys are playing. Uh, there's uh, Casey going back and hits Matt Fryer from Live Oak, Florida. Boy, Matt played a good, made some. Uh, we didn't, our White House didn't hardly drop any passes. Now, we dropped a couple inside, but. Uh, those wideouts make some fine catches. No Matt, I'm, he's such an intense football player. We're so glad to have him on our football team. But kick, here comes, has he missed one yet? Rich, no, he has Richie not. Richie Andrews has not missed a kick this year, has he? No, there was one that may have been a little wide, but there was an offside penalty. I believe that was in yeah, the uh -huh. Georgia Southern game, but yeah. he came back and then kicked yeah. it through. Well, he's done a great job for us. Which yeah. goes to the Gator Bowl. Big ball game for Bobby Bobby. Very big ball game because he's going and play the school that he just coached at before he came to Florida State, which is always a, a major hurdle for any coach and and everybody gets up uh, bobby gets up and of course all of west virginia gets up to beat him because they hung him in effigy the year before he left <laughs> i remember it was such a wet and dreary night there in the gator bowl and florida state started off the ball game getting on the board first when uh, one of your protégés uh, phil hall starts to michael hall one of my apprentices uh here one of, uh, a really wonderful kid who who had a great work ethic not only as a, a kicker but as a young actor well, I tell you, he starts off at Florida State with a 23-yard field goal, but right behind that, uh, West Virginia comes back and they tie the ball game up. But what an exciting play on the ensuing kickoff. As we look down there, and Mr. Billy Allen takes in that ball, hits a nice big hole, and goes 95 yards on a kickoff return, and Florida State jumps out on top of West Virginia. The quarterback of that ball game was Blair Williams, who was an outstanding quarterback, and he had a great ball game because he just opened up throwing the football and had great running out of Greg Allen. Mm -hmm. Greg Allen was a, a sophomore, and uh, I think Greg Allen would have played professional football had he not hurt his knee like his junior or senior year. Blair Williams made another guy's career, because through the four years he'd been at the school, Dennis McKinnon was always a kid that had potential. Potential, yeah, the, the, that awful word. But he looked great in that game, and uh, Chicago spied him, and, uh, and he had a terrific career at Chicago. Bobby Bowden, you had a great great encounter with West Virginia for the first time. They came out and produced two touchdowns in a row. Well, our defense was playing real well and getting turnovers. There's old uh, Joe Ostrzewski down there, number 89, Howard Dinkins from Jacksonville. He played. There's old Henry Ostro there. Uh, Terrell Buckley had another great game. Tony Moss from Miami, Florida, Bill Reagan. That gum you, Bill. Bill from Live Oak, Florida. He was gone. He had, he Bill, had a Bill right? had, was gone if he makes that catch. And here comes Big Amp again. Oh, look at that block down there by Mancini from Brandon, Florida. Made a nice play. And here's old uh, Edgar Bennett, who's becoming a very versatile football player, as you can tell. He's got good hands. He's catching the ball good. He's running in the open field. Bill, Bill Sexton, who coaches our running backs, talking to him there. And there's uh, Brad hit Matt Fryer from Live Oak, Florida, again on a nice play. Matt catches a seven-yard pass. I'm telling you, he bullied it for the neck for the first down. He looks like he's about 17, 18 years old, but he made those two no, defenders he's know that he's a big league he's player. He's a worker. He's yeah. a worker. He's dedicated. Oh, look at that good blocking in there by was that, No, that's Edgar Bennett. There's a fine catch in there by Matt Fryer again. 
So we're mighty proud of him and Bill Reagan from there. And then, of course, uh, Urza Earl Smith, our freshman, who hasn't played yet, but I've been very happy with him. Well, here's Brad hitting Edgar Bennett. Caught him in a blitz. Then, then look at here, one tackle, break one tackle, make, make two tackles, break three tackles. Very good. That's, yeah. That's our Coca-Cola play of the game, Coach. Well, Edgar Bennett, be. he slipped three, four tackles and scored a touchdown. Yeah. Boy, Matt, old, old Brad Johnson makes a play out of it, too. Brad Johnson had no one. Brad Johnson's got no interceptions now for three three games. He keeps that up, you got a chance, I'll tell you what. Boy, he got better, though. I thought Brad got better, and uh, I feel so much better about our quarterback, and uh, uh, I just feel much better about him. And, of course, that'll enable us to redshirt Charlie Ford, you know, if we can, if those two can continue to do it. Kenny Feller's beginning to get his feet wet again, beginning to get the feel of it. And uh, But here's Brad back on a nice pass to... Uh, uh, is that must be Dawson. my man Dawson. Yeah. Very good catch, good route, and at least the pass protection our offensive line is having. They're doing such a good job. There's uh, Reggie Johnson from Pensacola, Florida. He and Dave Roberts from Griffin, Georgia. Warren Hart played at tight end from Jacksonville, Florida. Marvin uh, Farrell played from Jacksonville, Florida. They're two freshmen. You know, we play. I think we played about ten. I think we played ten, eleven freshmen on our first two units. Real fine running there again by. Uh, Amp Lee, Chipley, Florida. I'm proud of him. Uh, Sean Jackson from uh, New Orleans played a lot at tailback. Chris Parker played some. And uh, then we played, then Paul Moore played some at fullback. Pinckney, uh, I'm not sure if we got Pinckney in there or not. But I'm, I got to get him in the ballgame one. And here's uh, a good play to Amp Lee on a four, fourth and six, I believe. And uh, Amp makes the first down. There's Matt Fryer out there blocking for him. Uh, uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, that's real fine blocking. Re Reg yeah, real fine blocking by Reggie uh, Dixon there from Jackson, Florida. Oh, well, he, he runs that ball good in the open field. Converted a couple of fourth down conversions in the ball game. Yes, we did. We had a couple of fourth downs. There's Reggie. Uh, we put that play in for uh, the quarterback, the quarterback sneak, which we hadn't done lately. Brad and Johnson. Brad, big Brad, uh, made, made, made the touchdown there. The last time Brad Johnson was in the Superdome, he was holding for a snap and tried to fake field goal, and it didn't work. He uh, yeah. <laughs> made up for that last night. He got Saturday it. Night. He got it last night. So yeah. We got 24 nothing to leave. Now I get so mad at myself. I could be. I could shoot. I mean, gee, we had a shutout. We had a 20. Look at, look at Johnny White about to get an interception. 31 back there is Levon uh, Brown, Brown from Moore, Moore, Moorhaven. From Moorhaven, Florida. We didn't call that name out a long time. But look at Tony Moss putting pressure on. Oh, there's a great interception by Errol McCorvey from Pensacola, Tola, Florida. And there's Levon Brown, seeing number 31, yeah. Moorhaven, Florida. Here's the replay of that play. Yeah, uh, watch, watch, watch it, Earl. Really broke Very on fine. the ball, yeah. didn't he? Our defense, I, I, I have never, I wanted them to shut it, I wanted them to shut out, because they were playing so good, I wanted them to save the shutout. But no, I had to call a stupid play, and it was, <laughs> it was, it was meant to help, but it didn't. Nice defensive play here, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah but Bill Reagan's coming. Bill Reagan's fingertip on it. Does a great job underneath it. Uh, uh, by the way, we had a blitz on there, and a little, see a little number 27 at the bottom? Watch out. You he's take put, over. He's, he's putting a little heat on there. Yeah, he sure is. That was that <laughs> corner blitz. You don't see that was the, uh, number 27 come through there. Yeah, that's right. We, that was a corner blitz. And uh, now here's Casey here. And uh, uh, they intercept the ball and score. Reggie Johnson saves us there on making the tackle. He'd have gone for a touchdown. Although, no, that little 27 ran good for them. Boy, I tell you, I know they were proud of him. He ran the ball a lot. Now they put this good, other good run in, but boy, there's those. Kurt Carruthers out there playing, taking care of home just like he's supposed to. And, uh, boy, here comes another blitz. Kurt coming. Oh, we just miss it. We just miss yeah. it. I wish we'd have had the fourth down play, I think. Fourth and goal, it was. Yeah, I wish we could have stopped it because the defense played so doggone well. But uh, then they come back and score. And they try an onside kick. And uh, who made it? Was it Dawson? Lawrence made this? Dawsey. Dawsey. Uh, Dawsey. <laughs> Looks like he's catching yeah. the pass. Bill, Bill Sexton coaches that part of our game, and he did a heck of a job. I see Eric Terrell, by the way, from uh, Tallahassee now. Also, Bill Sexton coaches our kickoff team, our kick return team, and the prevent team. And boy, they, they, we could have lost the game right there if he hadn't done such a good job. That was a nice catch by Ampley. You got, you got old uh, Casey back in there. Here's Eric Terrell from Tallahassee, Florida. That's his first collegiate catch, and it's a touchdown. And I was wanting to get the, was wanting to get the ball in his hands to see what he'd do with it. And, he did about what you'd expect, do what he did in high school, run for touchdown. Oh, he was something. Got a lot of ability. Very fast. Yeah, John Eason coaches those wide outs, and John's really got his hands full this year. You know, he had it made last year with a Fab Four. Now he's working uh, working those kids, and 
Oh, there's a nice uh, touchdown by uh, by Tulane. They go for two here, but uh, we get we get the sack. Who is that number ninety something in there? Just oh, that's uh, uh, Reggie Freeman. Reggie Freeman from where? Uh, Cluston. Yeah. yeah, Reggie Freeman. I'm I'm really proud of him. We're we're so proud of the way he's playing. You know, we've moved him to tackle. We've moved him to nose guard. He's such a competitor. We just felt, felt like y'all be playing. Now there's old another on side. There's our man. Uh, who is that? Casey Weldon. Casey Weldon, Tallahassee, Florida. And uh, we're mighty proud to get that win. I thought I thought Tulane. is some kind of unsportsmanlike conduct, although we'll probably see it on the ensuing kickoff. We're not sure, sure against who. It would not be against Florida State or he'd be kicking about a 30-yard extra point. Andrews adds it. 31-28. You're scored out. Make that 32-28. You're scored. Chief Osceola can celebrate, albeit briefly. Blakeman. With his running backs in the eye is over his center. He will play fake and drops to throw. Here comes pressure, gets rid of the ball. It's picked off by Buckley. He may go. Buckley to the 40. Buckley to the 30. Buckley to the 20. Cuts it to the inside. Buckley hurtling. He waits for the blockers in the middle to the five. Buckley, touchdown, Florida State. The Bobby Bowden Show is brought to you... Rock'em Sock'em football game in a wet capital city on Saturday night, but Florida State prevails 39-28. to 28. Hello once again. Welcome to our show, and Coach, congratulations. What a what a ball game that was. Don't congratulate me. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I just stood there and watched. But I, I tell you what, our kids came back and won a great win the other night because uh, Virginia Tech had us down, what, 21-3 to 3 yeah. in the second quarter? I thought they were going to kill us. But our kids got an opportunity to do something that a lot of teams get an opportunity to do they can't can't fulfill. They came back from the dead and won, and I, that, I don't know what that means, but it, show, it ain't bad. Florida State with a win over Virginia Tech now improves its record to 4-0. Oh, if you're looking for football highlights, we've got plenty in store, plus a great moment in Florida State. Football. See the game despite the weather, and what a game they saw. Yeah, but Burt Reynolds was missing. I thought he might make it to the ball game, but he was <laughs> unable to make it. And, uh, but we did have a, you know, for a rainy day, I, it would have been a sellout, I believe, other than that. Uh, Richie Andrews from Fort Lauderdale continues to kick off well. Kicks that ball deep in the end zone. And, uh, boy, that hit, oh, they, that was a nice hit by Big Leon Fowler, number three, in Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, you know, we started off pretty good stopping them. And, uh, boy, that's number 55. There's Marvin Jones, a freshman. I think he had 20 tackles. You're going to see him game. all through these highs. All over there. All over there. Terrell Buckley back. And they kick the ball away from him. They kick it out of bounds. We take the football. We run a reverse right off the bat. Right off, uh, Shannon Baker uh, from Lakeland, Florida, runs a reverse, picks up about 20, I think, or 18 or 20. Shannon Baker had his best game. He made some excellent catches. He was one for one throwing the football, and he ran a beautiful reverse. Here he is right here on reverse. Brad Johnson from Black Mountain, North Carolina, hands off to Shannon Baker. I know his mother down in uh, Lakeland, Florida, is mighty proud of her son. And uh, now we take the ball and go right down and put three on, three on the board. Great, great catch by Lawrence Dawsey from Dothan, Alabama. And uh, that was a third down conversion, I believe. Uh, yeah, that was a big and catch by I Dawson. know his uh, coach Parrish from uh, his high school up in Dothan, Alabama, was here for the game. But Brad Johnson throws the ball. <laughs> Look, uh, he launched it. I don't call that a pass, a launch. But when you're throwing to somebody like Dawson, Dawson will get his share of them. I got him covered beautifully. Yeah, another, but uh, look at Dawson. Yeah. Boy, that, and he's got this great desire to catch that football that anybody else seen. Now here comes Brad, hits Dawson again. There's Mike Morris, number 60 from Miami, leading the way. 
I don't know how we, we, we got beat up in this ball game. Mike Marsh got hurt some. Uh, uh, Hayward Haynes, both starting guards, went yeah. out of the ball. Mancini, Mancini starting Mancini tackle, went out of the game. Uh, Terrell Buckley. And anyway, here, there's old Richie Andrews kicking five for five on field goals. Now, we, we missed one later on, but it was mighty close. 43 yards. Yes, and it's plenty far. Uh, but that, but he's done a real good job. Gene, Gene Hout uh, from North from North Carolina, uh, snapping air. There's old Corian Freeman from Jacksonville, Florida. Here's Corian number ten pursuing, and uh, boy, look at look at John Nance from Bartow, made one of those Odell Hagen type of hits. And of course, Kirk Carruthers always around the ball. Tony Moss number 99, Kirk Carruthers uh, there, and uh, they they make it get this quarterback Will Furrow. He he really impressed me. They had a running pass here. Golly, great pressure by somebody. And a real fine tackle that Leon, Leon Fowler again must have made a lot of tackles. But look at that guy pushing. That, that guy pushed him off. That should have been called. He's a basketball player. Yeah, he was, they get away with well, that that's, basketball. Well, that's what they're supposed to be, <laughs> But that gives Virginia Tech the lead. Yeah, uh, sure. And I corner covered that thing pretty well. But the guy just pushed him off. And those things ought to be called. But anyway, here they come now. Did we, we got our three points. Man, they, they ripped us free. That's... There's, again, Marvin Jones. He's a true freshman. He played linebacker. He started linebacker. And, uh, boy, nice run in there. Number 15, Bill Reagan's had a good game. Bill Reagan's had a good game. And watch the guy push off there. There he is again. Yeah, that's a little pushing off. But, anyway, that's yet I'll give him. I'll, I ought to be happy we won the ball game. Quit complaining. Now, all of a sudden, Coach, the crowd is taken out of the ball oh, game almost goodness, completely. Goodness, unbelievable. 14 to 3. Yeah, I mean, we, we took it right back down. We took it down there and just missed a, a touchdown ourselves. Now, Casey Weldon comes in. We give him a series, the second uh, uh, session. And there's a handoff to Ampley from Chipley, Florida, who ran the ball real well. We didn't do anything. John uh, Wembley kicks in. We get it blocked. I don't think we even touched anybody. Uh, I don't think it was his slowness that got it blocked. Uh, and uh, now here they come back play. again. Yeah, here they go. One play. We missed a tackle back there. And uh, there's some good hustling by Johnny White. Thank goodness for Johnny White. They fumbled the football. But the officials already warned him on a touchdown. But they ended up recovering it anyway. So... Uh, anyway, now they got a 21 to 3 lead, and that's, we, I don't know if we're going to pull out of it. But th now, this is where I really have to hand it to our players. I, I really felt like I was helpless. I really felt like I did not do a good job on the sideline. But that gum, our assistant coaches did. Our defense did a good job, and our kids did a good job. Great catch. Dossie made that play right there, probably got us some momentum going. You know what? That was, a, that was a momentum play. Lawrence Dossie, there's not anybody that can do it any better than he can for us, Lawrence Dawson. One of the Brad few Johnson. seniors on your team, and he is fired up and given some inspiration. Oh, to yeah. Oh, yeah. No kidding. And our protection is good. Look at Mancini. Block. I tell you, Edgar Bennett, I thought, blocked his best game. Edgar Bennett. People ask, now, uh, Brad running for a first down. After he got tra uh, got trapped, he ran for a first down. It was a big play. Edgar Bennett did not have a lot of stats the other night. Uh, and, but but he, he, he blocked. That's the best I've seen him block. Reggie Johnson. Uh, from Pensacola, Escambia High School, makes a play there. Now we come back and hit Dawson again across the middle. Dawson from Dothan, Alabama. Uh, fifth year senior, there's Robbie Baker, number 51, from Fort Myers, Florida. Here's and nice here. catch there by Dawson. He had six catches for 120 yards in the first half, Coach. In the first half. Well, he just did well. I'm mighty proud of him. Uh, Reggie Dixon there from Jacksonville, Florida, blocking the tackle. Here's a pass, a gr an excellent play, Shannon Baker. Shannon Baker had his best ball game. Matt Fryer from Live Oak played real well. Uh, Dave Roberts played well at tight end. Uh, uh, it comes to Ampley and there's Ampley from Chipley running in there for a touchdown. I'm mighty proud of him. Uh, Rob Stevenson was playing a lot in there from Pensacola, Florida. He was playing a lot. And, uh, uh, of course, there's Edgar Bennett, number 22. Paul Moore played at fullback. Uh, I don't think we got, I think, I don't think we got, uh, I don't think we got Sean Johnson in the ball game or Chris Parker in the ball game, but we won it. And here's a, here's a nice play to Dave. Was that Dave Roberts? Yep. From or was Dave. Dave was on the front of our uh, brochure, mm -hmm. This the program this Graduate week. student, Gra teaches classes, oh, and goes yeah. out and comes Excellent up with two student. big catches on Excellent. this scoring drive. Exactly. And there was another good play by Shannon Baker. Brad Johnson's throwing the ball well. Now Johnson, boy, watch this run by Ampley. Look at this run. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Can he make people miss? Can he make people miss? He is unbelievable. Jeez, About 12 will. yards on his own. Yeah. And here's, boy, Dave Roberts from some nice... Masterful work there. Great job. Very pleasing. Here's a great catch by Shannon Baker. You watch Shannon. Watch this. I think I tell you, Shannon might have arrived. He might be arrived. You know what? I mean, he's beginning to do some things that, that big league receivers, well, they play this thing. Watch Brad Johnson. He goes, he he goes airborne too. He he <laughs> seven forty sevens in there in there too, doesn't he? I mean, he went right over the top at big six foot six frame of his and 
And when he stretches out, now you got six. You know, you got six. <laughs> that two-point conversion <laughs> makes it a three-point deficit at halftime. A lot more action coming up in the second half. In between now and then, a great moment with Burt Reynolds. Stay with us. He's a, he's a great athlete. Jingle joints, Ron Sellers. What a great athlete. Unbelievable. You know, I played hit, like his third tennis game with him. I was going with Dinah Shore at the time, and she said, let's see if this guy can play tennis, and he just killed both of us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's amazing, because he just took up golf just recently. I know, he's a scratch golfer, right? He is that, but you know, you go back and you think about your receivers, and through the years, everybody knows, of course, he was a consensus All-American, uh, you know, two years in a row, and just a great athlete, but his stats, uh, they're, they're frightening, they're absolutely frightening. Here's a guy that uh, had 16 catches in one game against South Carolina in 1968, well, that, that game, uh, South Carolina, uh, 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 was Wake Forest, wasn't it? No, South Carolina. Well, the Wake, For the Wake Forest game is the ones that they're, the Wake Forest people are still having nightmares over. Wouldn't you? My goodness, yeah. he comes out there, and by himself, he has 260 yards receiving. Yeah. And not only that, he has five touchdowns. For most touchdowns. receivers, that is a whole career. <laughs> I know. <laughs> five but, games over 200 yards, Vic. 18 games over 100 yards. Ooh, that is something. And stop and think about this for consistency. He averaged 119 yards per game receiving during his three-year career. No, it's absolutely scary. I mean, he was unbelievable. And he actually played with a guy named Fred Bolitnikoff, which wasn't <laughs> bad either. <laughs> no, that wasn't bad at all. And of course, he had some great quarterbacks for him. You know, Kappelman and uh, Gary Huff were throwing the ball from that time. And that's why now when people stop and they ask, who was the greatest receiver? Letnikoff? Was it uh, Sellers? Well, Ron Sellers, we're so very proud of you because you were just inducted in 1988 in the Collegiate Football Hall of Fame, Florida State's first. He, he is a great, great athlete. And I, I think you've got a debate about the Blintnikoff. You can talk about the fact that Blintnikoff played defense and offense. And you can, you can argue all day as to who's the better. And I don't, I don't think either one of you would win. The point is that he was the first in the Hall of Fame and, and also that he's a, a terrific guy and we're very, very proud of Ron Sully. Campbell Stadium Saturday night. At halftime, the Seminoles have their work cut out for them, Coach. You're down by three, 21-18. Yeah, well, you find out what your team is made out of when you're behind. If, you, if you're never behind, you really don't know. And here's Eric, Tur no, is that, is that Eric, Eric Terrell? Terrell from Eric Terrell. Terrell from Tallahassee, Florida. He got in uh, as return man, number seven, and he's a sophomore this year and, and uh, ran, ran some, had some nice returns. Okay, Brad, and we're behind. Are you hits Edgar Benning across the middle? And uh, Edgar makes, picks up about seven yards, picks up a block over by Ampley. Then he comes, well, here's hitting uh, Edgar again. Play. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's uh, Edgar from Jacksonville, Florida. And Platt had enough, he's the one I was, I was talking about a while ago, had such a good game blocking. It's sort of taken him out of the game. Well, you? yeah, well, he's been, been so hot lately, they, they, they were determined there's, but Shannon Baker, see our wideouts caught more passes. They were more dangerous. Matt Fryer, uh, Shannon Baker. Here's yeah, a good, so. now here's, here's a, uh, a fullback. There's yep. old uh, Edgar. Edgar. Boy, made did some good things there. He's trying to pick up a block down there by Reggie Johnson, who did not want to clip. Thank goodness he didn't. But uh, Edgar had a nice catch. Edgar's catching the ball well and running with it once he gets it. Now, here's Bad with a nice Matt Fry from Live Oak. I know the people in Live Oak are proud of old Matt. His first touchdown catch. Coach yeah, Coach he is. And he enthusiastic. He's one of the most enthusiastic football players we've got. He's going to be a great leader as he, as he matures. He just needs some success. He, and, and we're getting some. we got a football team that's. The biggest thing that's me about Miami, they're going to have veterans. You know, their receivers are all veterans, and they got great athletes. we got great athletes, too, but gosh, they got a lot of playing a lot of freshmen. What's it feel like to have the lead, Coach? It's been a long time. It's 25-21 now. Oh, I know it. Yeah, watch this number 55 make a little tackle down here on this go. No, not here. Not here, but great and good interception by McCorvey. McCorvey, gee, I was mighty pleased with him from Pensacola, Florida. There's a uh, Abbott, uh, Bryce Abbott from uh, Tifton. And you dodged oh, one boy, that was a shame. We dodged a bullet, yep. and I'm... I tell you, I just, I, 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 that, was, that was my fault there. That's just my fault again. That's two times in a row. You're going to see a big goal line stand here, Coach. Yeah. It takes four downs to get it in from yeah. three yards. Yeah, watch this tackle here by, ooh, look at that. Tackle by number 55, a true freshman from Miami, Florida, along with Kurt Carruthers, and they run out a little fast out there. We just couldn't, uh, we couldn't corral these guys. They, you, and you have to hand it to them. I mean, they, they came out there and worked and, 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 and got it. Uh, is that Ross, one of our, our walk-on players in there in the ballgame? Here's Ampley on a real nice run here. 
Dolphy nice. blocking. Boy, look, that's some fine running in. You're down, Coach, and we're getting close to the fourth quarter. Yeah, I know it. And here we come back, and uh, I don't... Do we score here and, and get ahead of them? Or do we throw an interception? Right back up no, the field. No, we intercepted. No, our defense yeah. has to do it, remember? Yeah. Well, we, we, we were behind. We had to come back, and but I, watch our defense here. Watch this great play by Terrell Buckley. This is why I think Buckley's probably one of the best corners in the country. Now, he's only a sophomore. Men, I tell you, he is playing... I, I, it's hard for somebody to show me a corner playing better than him. Well, look at that blocking down there by... Who is that leading that interference? That's Ooh. John Weiss there. With John Weiss with a real key block. Somebody else. I think a, I think it was a Dinkin. I think it was Dinkin's. What's Dinkins leading well there? Leading the way. Oh, no, it's 56. Who That's 56 Sterling Palmer. 56. Sterling Palmer, yeah. Sterling played a big role there the other night. I was so pleased with the way he played uh, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and boy, old, old Johnny White from, from uh, Thomasville puts the clincher on there, and, Ron, and uh, Rich Andrews kicks another extra point, and now we go ahead 32 to 28. Now it hits all our defense now. See, saw, see, it saw. Is all the, there's Osceola, Chief Osceola. He did a great job. They did a great job there. The band, the Seminole old band always does a great. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that tackle. Who is that guy? Look at that. And they fumbled the football. And uh, God, McCorvey McCorvey goes. McCorvey picks it up and runs for a touchdown. And, it, and that's the first time I thought, well, we might win the game. And you know what? They took the ball and came right back down to our five. But look at, look at that. Number, uh, Marvin that number Jones. Mar and then Kirk, and Kirk Carruthers. Carruthers. Jones makes the tackle. Carruthers knocks the ball out. And uh, McCorvey picks it back. Now, you think it don't take team effort to win football games, but that was team effort. I thought it was a great play. And the new rule change says if a ball is fumbled uh, across the line of scrimmage, it can be returned, and the Seminoles take advantage of that new rule. McCorvey with a 78-yard <laughs> touchdown run. The Seminoles <laughs> dodge a bullet. Yeah, I don't like looking at that, fam. I, I steal from the 19-yard line. Johnson wraps, taps it over to Dorsey. Dorsey to the 10, to the 5. Dorsey to the 1. Touchdown, Florida State. Thank you very much for joining us. The Bobby Bowden Show, the nation's longest winning streak, goes by the boards in Miami Saturday afternoon as the Miami Hurricanes hand the Florida State Seminoles their first loss of the season. And, Coach, rugged battle in the Orange Bowl, as they always are. Well, it really was. We looked like two different teams. One half, we played like junior high school football team. And uh, the second half, we played real good. I, I hope we found ourselves. Uh, you don't know, but... Uh, First half, it, it looked like our kids didn't feel like they belonged in that league, you know? We really like two different leagues. But then the second half, we came back and, and outplayed them in the second half. So maybe something good will come out of this. Florida State spotted Miami a 24 to nothing lead in the first half, and then came roaring back, and we're just eight points away before the final horn sounded. We'll have the highlights coming up in a great moment in Florida State football with Burt Reynolds. Stay with us. We're proud ever to see a football game in the Orange Bowl was at the stadium Saturday afternoon to see second-ranked Florida, Florida State take on ninth-ranked Miami. Coach, Nas great crowd. National television, a beautiful day, and a packed house. It was a beautiful setting. And uh, they kicked the football off. Now, that's Eric Terrell back there returning kickoffs. We were using him and Shannon Baker back there. First play of the ball game, Al Flea picks up about a first down running the football. That's a good sign. You know, you think, uh, I see Mike Marsh leading the way. And then uh, we run a, that was, of course, that was a running play in a passing situation. And uh, we needed, we, we lacked about five yards of making the first down. Then uh, John Wembley from Tampa, Florida, punched the football and uh, gets, a good, gets a good roll on it. Who's that down there covering that thing? Sterling, Sterling, Sterling Palmer. Sterling Palmer from Fort Lauderdale and uh, Gene Howe from mm -hmm. North Carolina. Then they, they throw a takeoff here and the, uh, the receiver is covered. Our, our pass defense, I thought, played pretty good. You know, their running game is what really killed us. And I, I guess having, you know, the Ostrzewskis out all week and DeAndre Clark, some of the other guys. Uh, oh, uh, Terrell Buckley playing with a well, bad Terrell, ankle. Terrell, yeah, T Terrell played, but he didn't practice all week, and it, it, it showed. There's Shannon Baker there making a catch there. Then again, we're forced to punt. Now, look at the field position. We had terrible field position the first, the first uh, quarter and a half. Every time we got the ball, we were backed up. And then we would get a penalty. We would shoot ourselves in the foot. We'd end up with a third and 30, a third and 20. And they got their running game going. We, we were not very good up. They, they, their offensive line really dominated our defensive line. And, uh, good and, second and oh, third yeah. effort by McGuire. Oh, yeah. He bounced off two or three times. Oh, he did a, they, they, they did a great job. Miami did a great job. Here's a reverse, beautiful reverse by Hill. And uh, we hem it up out there. Is that uh, McCorvey out there? Stays mm -hmm. there and John fights it pretty good. John yeah, he White's stays out there and fights it. John White. Marvin uh, Jones, our, our freshman linebacker from Miami, he led us in tackling again. He had 15 tackles. 
So he's going to be an outstanding linebacker. We covered that good. They end up with three. No, yeah, no. I think they end up with three points here. Yeah. The field that, that was batted down by Tony Moss from Miami, Florida. I see Billy Reagan's out there from Live Oak, Florida, playing in at Strong State. They kick a field goal, and we come out there. We, we're lucky we get out of there on only three. You had to feel pretty good because field position was in the oh, favor, and your yeah. defense stopped. That's Miami. exactly right. But then we get the ball back, and and we get two two uh, uh, penalties in a row, and and they get they get good field position uh, out of it again. And uh, but our, our, our punt coverage was good, and uh, but see they just keep hammering. They just keep hammering. See, we should have had a tackle there. We we should have. We missed tackles. We, like our kids are blind. You know, like the guy who runs right by us, we don't even see it. I hope we'll get better at that. And I think we will. I, this the the this football team's football is ahead of it. What we've got to hope is we grow up. Now they that's uh, another fine run. I tell you, they, Miami had boy, they got great skill. I think we can match them in skill. I think their skill is older than our skill, and, they, and they're not making the mistakes that ours are making. Playing with more, playing with more confidence. Here's a guy that had a great day at uh, uh, Dawson from from uh, Dothan, Alabama. Somebody said Ashford. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Ashford right outside of Dothan? <laughs> so he's a little closer to Ashford. Went to Northview you know, High School in North Dothan. Northview High School in Dothan. I, I've always said Dothan. Somebody said, well, no, he's really from Ashford, Alabama. We we'll have to correct. Him. But I tell you, he got caught 13 passes the other night for 160 yards. And it's been, what, since 1969 we had a guy catch that man? And Vito since 69. Oh, yeah. And uh, great play by uh, Craig Erickson, the quarterback at Miami. I thought he did an excellent job. He's a, he knows what he's doing. Uh, I think their coach has a great offense here. I, 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 I ain't got nerve enough to run it. <laughs> but it's it, it, because, uh, well, it just it depends so much on that quarterback. But it is, it is a tough offense. There's number three, Leon Fowler. Howard Dinkins makes the Before, good Dinkins down. from Jacksonville, Florida makes the tackle. See, they're hammering. Look at them. They're hammering. They're hammering. They're hammering. There's Johnny White playing. I know he must have had some good hits. We started two pure freshmen. Now, Corey Fuller from uh, Tallahassee, Florida, started at corner in, in, in the place of uh, Buckley. And then, of course, Marvin Jones. But they, they stepped right over us. Their, their offensive line beat our defensive line, Gene. And I, we, we have really got to get better in that area. And I think we can if we can get the guys healthy and get out there and practice with them. When they, when they don't practice, they don't play well. 17 nothing now, Coach. And uh, 1988 had to be going through your mind because uh, this is about the way that game was. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. We went down there last time. They like to kill us. There's Kirk Carruthers making a tackle there. And uh, we, we felt, oh, this kid makes a great, a good, great block out there. And uh, old Fowler kind of heads him back. Johnny White makes the tackle. And a couple of guys get in. They're pushing us around pretty good now, though, you know. They are really pushing us around. Good play by Abbott. Bryce Abbott from uh, Tifton, Georgia, makes a play there. And uh, then they hit, a, they hit a strike here. Nice, nice, beautiful pass, beautiful catch. And uh, it looks like they're going to look 24 to nothing. <laughs> 24 to nothing, man. I'm, we had done nothing. But now then it's all Florida State from now on. See? Right there, uh huh. But you can't give Miami a 24 point lead. There's a nice catch by Edgar Bennett, who played another football, good football. He had four or five more catches in this ball game. We had we dropped early in the ball game. We were dropping him, but this guy right here played like an All-American. Uh, it'd be hard for uh, Dawson. He played like an All-American. He's got such oh, he's so competitive. Uh, Brad Johnson back there to throw. Now pass protection was good. Now our pass blocking was good. Reggie Dixon, uh, Mancini, Mike Morris, uh, Hayward Haynes, uh, Robin Baker. Robin Baker keeps mm -hmm. getting better. He's only a sophomore. He keeps getting better in there. And one of, these, one of these days, I think we're going to dividend. We'll pay the. They'll play. Now there's Dawson on his touchdown run. Nice catch. And uh, and uh, so that makes it what? Six. We go for two. That was our Coca Cola play of the game. That was the Coca Cola. Yeah, exactly. That was the play of the game right there. Now that, we, you know, we just hadn't had any momentum all game. And Dawson gets it. He, he broke five tackles there, I'm betting, on that touchdown. We go for two here and get it batted down. Get the ball batted down. Had the receiver open. But uh, they, they made a good play. And, uh, and so anyway, we, we got six points. Going at the half, what, 24 to 6? They played Miami. Well, I was sitting right beside you, and uh, everything was levitating in the room, you know? And, and I remember when uh, Dexter Carter went sailing down the sideline, and I jumped up and yelled things that shouldn't have been on the radio. But what the heck? <laughs> in that ball game, there was, in my estimation, and we talked about this before, and you were the one that brought it up, and you thought this was a turning point. And I totally agree with you. Which play was that? Miami was driving, they got down on like a one-foot line, and uh, they were going in. And uh, I think it was Eric Hayes, I'm not sure. 
Somebody stopped him on the one-foot line. He fumbled, and uh, Carruthers, who was always the right guy at the right place all day long, uh, got the fumble. In fact, Carruthers, I think, made Sports Illustrated Player of the, of the Week. So, Bert, Florida State beats Miami 24 to 10. And Miami goes on to win the national championship. So we see all those t-shirts all over Tallahassee that say a Miami national championship team, except they lost to Florida State. That's the only <laughs> way we could do that. But Florida State, 24, Miami, 10. And Florida State maybe should have been number one that year. Join us again next week. When we really have to go in the Orange Bowl, and Coach, it looked like a, a Jekyll and Hyde football team. Your team really came out fired up in the second half. Uh, Gene, the big thing I had it said at the halftime was remind them that in 1987, we had led Miami 19-3 going into the fourth quarter. I said, and Miami had the poise and the, to come back and win the game. I said, now, by God, we're going to have to go out and do the same thing. And, 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 and our kids went back and really really played a, a great game. I, I was very, the second half, I thought we... we, we uh, we got every drop out that we could get. Uh, the kids just really played. I said you've been in there on a nice run. There on fourth down there, uh, we fa tried to fake a punt and go for it. Uh, Reggie Johnson ran the ball, and we, only, we came up about, about six inches short. But our defense, uh, <laughs> you know, held them here. They, they had a fourth and two inches now, mm -hmm. and our defense that. stopped them. That's encouraging. Huh? We, we could stop the short yards, so we could not stop them on first down. They could get about six, seven oh, yards on first down. Unbelievable. Now, Reggie really moves good, and there's is that Dawson again. Dawson. See how he fights to stay on his feet after he gets hit? He don't go down on that first shot, and he just doesn't do it. Brad stayed his pocket good. I pat this Mancini there from Brandon, Florida, protecting Dawson from, from Alabama. Well, that's, he just glides across the middle. And that was the type of play that uh, Miami's defense is designed to stop. I know, Dawson yeah. got free time yeah. and time again. Matt Fryer there from Live Oak was blocking. Here comes old Brad Johnson. He's looking. Nobody's open. He's going to find Dawson again. Watch him. Excellent throw and excellent catch. Uh, Brad Johnson did a good job. I was very pleased with what he did. I was also pleased Casey Weldon came in. I directed a nice touchdown drive. Oh, that was a nice play there. <laughs> Oh, Dave Roberts. Dave Roberts had his best game. I mean, he had quite a few catches. You know, he's Eight done. catches, 82 yards. Yeah. Rich Andrews, who's played so well for us. I'm on, I might have to take a look at him punting this next week. I might, because he's a good punter. I'm, 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 I'm going to take a look at him in practice and see what happens. And there are the gap here, Coach. It's 24 to 9. 24 to 9, and we come back down. Here's uh, Amp Lee running the football. No, yes, Amp, 42 from Chipley, Florida. Picked, picked up a nice uh, run there. And Brad comes back and... Uh, Finds old Dawson again for a first down. It wasn't very. We needed three yards, and Dawson gets three. It's a, it's a game of inches. They're getting where they start looking old Dawson up now, though. And uh, so there's Dawson again. Boy, he's held on to that he, ball. He, he just, he's just so dependable. And uh, we just, again, our plan the second half, let's get the ball to Dawson. He's doing something. And and, and other guys are, are, are having a hard time. And then this, the other half of the, the duo was a uh, 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 Dave Roberts. Between Roberts From and Dawson, Georgia. that's, uh, what, uh, 13 uh, catches and eight. That's, that's 20, 21 catches. 21 catches, see? There's uh, Roberts again. Hangs on the ball good, wraps it up good, takes it down to three, and then Amp Lee from Chipley uh, takes it in uh, for the touchdown. Uh, Amp was a good block out there by uh, Hayward Haynes. Real fine block. And he goes in standing up, and uh, Brad, Brad did a real good job there. Got some good blocking there on that play. Uh, Marvin Fleming, yeah. Marvin Farrell, Farrell, Farrell. excuse me, mm -hmm. Marvin Farrell from Jacksonville, Florida, went in at the tight end position and blocked, and so now you're eight, you're, 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 you're eight points away. Mm -hmm. And then we take the ball down and fumble, you know, we had a, a center uh, quarterback change. Now they come back and they get a nice drive here. Great, great, great job by their, their ball club. Six and a half minutes of clock time, oh, and they get the, the seven points. Yeah, and, and they're running over us and through us and everything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just, they, they, now they, this is where you have to say that they're a great ball club because they, they had to have this drive. And they came back and got it. And uh, it reminds me of that when they played Notre Dame last year, when he was on the goal line, they came off and, and, and did it. That's what great teams are doing. Dennis Erickson is doing a great job at the University of Miami. And he's got a very compatible staff, in my opinion. That was the only score in the second half by Miami. Right That's there. exactly right. Yeah, so we, we played so much better. Coach, it's found after you get beat, it's easy to say. You know. But uh, now here comes Casey. We put Casey in the ball game. It's Shannon Baker. I saw Shannon's mother at the ball game and his, and, and his dad. They didn't, uh, they, I didn't get to talk to them, but I did get to see them. And uh, here we are back, Casey again. And uh, those are nice. that's one of the great, that was a great catch by Dawson. 
gets out of bounds. He just does everything he could have. He just does everything he has. And uh, that great play, great play there by uh, Casey, yeah, Casey Weldon. And uh, it was all, all over in two plays in a row. Still completed a pass. So, yeah, then he throws a touchdown pass to Dave Robertson. Boy, that was a big one. And uh, then we tried an onside kick uh, right after this now. And we got it, and we thought we got it. The officials didn't think we did. Now we tried to throw a pass to Case, and we, we threw the ball a little bit low. There's but here, now we, yeah, we thought we got this thing. We thought we got At least our kids thought they had it. Yeah, I, well, I, I, I can't see. I just listened hard. <laughs> there was a big pile up and a collision there. Yeah, the but one, we needed that. One we'd, side kick. We'd had time for one play. You never know what will happen. Uh, 24 seconds left on the clock, and the Seminoles were down by nine at the time. Yeah, that, the final that, that, score. They'd have won it no matter what, because I, I, if it had been eight, maybe we could have got it and got two. But... But it was a great it was a great football game, especially if you're from Miami. <laughs> Final <laughs> score, 31 to 22. The Miami Hurricanes to a good chance. Boarding buses this afternoon headed for a short ride to the airport, which would lead to a short flight to Columbus, Georgia, and then a short ride to Auburn, Alabama. Fifth ranked Tigers from Auburn awaiting the try for a 7:30 kickoff tomorrow night. Nobody wants it more than Dothan, Alabama native Lawrence Dossie. It's like my rivalry against Florida going to play Auburn because, um, like you said, I'm from Alabama and um, I beat them three years in a row and if I can beat them this year, Auburn can never say nothing. Every series. And it ends. Elsewhere, the Gators are looking to get back.